Okay, so we've done a simple regression. We have one independent variable and one dependent variable, but you know, one of the cool things about regression is that we can think a little bit more complexly here and not just about one variable affecting the other, but we can think about other types of variables and partial out the effects of these different variables and we can think about in this example maybe about the age structure, counties. Okay, so we know that, you know, education matters, the percentage of people who have college degrees matters, but what about the age structure? Um, as well as maybe the economic structure of these counties. If you look at my uh, do file, doing a multiple regression is actually easy, just as easy as doing a bivariate regression. We do the regression um, command, the same command. The first variable again is the dependent variable. Then we have our independent variables, percent college, and then we have percent 65. So people who percentage of people who are 65 years or older. Just highlight that and run it. And the similar display pops out. Again, we have our ANOVA table. We have our F statistic. It seems like the model even got better here. We have our R square, which just went up from 13%, went all the way up to 46%. So just considering age structure in addition to college education really changed this model a lot. Uh, adjusted R square now 44%, so still still pretty good. And then the coefficient table is very similar as before. We just have an extra coefficient. We have our constant, and then we have our two uh, percent of college educated and percent of 65 or older. And both of these are statistically significant. You can look at the coefficients themselves, and the interpretation is controlling for the age structure of the counties. The effect or the relationship of college education is now uh, 0 0.003 for one percent change in number of percentage of people who are college educated in a particular county it leads to about a 0.4 percent change in the number of people and the rate of voting so if you know 10 percent of people are college educated that changes um, the voting rate by four percent and the age structure um, is uh, basically half a percent. So per percent of people who are over 65 uh, leads to a half percent change in uh, voting rates. One question you might have is, you know, which one of these effects is actually relatively stronger? And um, sometimes that's a difficult question to answer just because um, it's hard to compare two variables if they're measured slightly different. And, you know, you can make an argument that these are measure the same but sometimes when we're looking at two independent variables it's like comparing apples to oranges one thing you can do to kind of get a better idea of which one is having a more relative impact uh, than the other is to standardize these coefficients in terms of standard deviations so instead of saying a unit change in the independent variable leads to a unit change in the independent variable we can say a standard deviation change in the independent variable leads to a particular type of standard deviation change on the dependent variable and to, so standardizing um, coefficients in regression models is actually quite common. Um, there's situations where it's not really that helpful, um, but when you have different independent variables that are measured differently, it's usually helpful. And to do that, uh, you just run the same regression command. So regret, regress um, voting rate with percent college and percent 65 or older. Put the comma, which is the option of this command, and type in beta which basically tells Stata to create standardized coefficients. Just highlight that and run it. And the model itself doesn't change in terms of the fit statistics, but you'll notice here in beta, first of all, the constant is zero because the constant's always um, zero in standardized form. But you can see that uh, a standard deviation change in percent of people who are college educated leads to a 0.37 standard deviation change in voting rate whereas a standard deviation change in percent of people who are 65 or older leads to over half a standard deviation change in uh, voting rate so in relative terms uh, people who are older the age structure of counties seem to have a more important impact on voting rate than college education by itself now we know which one is more relatively stronger um, one thing we could do now um, is also now create a new variable that gives us the predictive va predictive values of this regression. So if we just know these two components of a county, you know, can we predict the voting rate 
of what happened in 2000. Basically, a regression is making a prediction, but we can create a variable that actually predicts per, per observation. And uh, to do that, you just run the regression again, and then you have as a second command, predict fitted. And it will create a new variable called fitted, which is just a calculation of the voting rate as it is predicted by the regression model. And if I run that, and if you look at the Stata observation, just browse. If you just look at the last column, we'll see that a new variable has been created called fitted. And it's basically the calculated predicted value of voting, uh, voting rate that our regression model is predicting. We'll talk more about this next time. Um, but one of the things you can do that now is just graph what was actually um, predicted against what really occurred. Basically, uh, graph the residuals of the difference between what's predicted and what actually happened. And this is uh, looking at the fitted values versus the residuals. And you can see it's pretty random. There is no any order to this, which is good, because we don't want uh, our errors to be correlated with anything. Uh, we'll talk more about that next time. And then we could also look against particular variables. So we can look at plot against not the predicted, but against uh, one of the independent variables. And we can also see that the residuals are not correlated with this independent variable, the percentage of people who are 65 and older, which is also good because that's one of the central assumptions of regression is that it's not each variable is not correlated with the errors. And uh, next time we'll we'll talk more about uh, residuals and these assumptions and what to do about them if they are violated, as well as kind of work with that natural log income variable that we created but we didn't have time to play around with. Um, we'll do that next time. But if you want, now that we have these variables set up uh, and we have you have the syntax here, you can play around with different predictors to see which which factor may actually predict better uh, voting outcome or vo voting rates for the year 2000. Maybe you know, maybe looking at Hispanic percentage or white percentage, or just play around with the data. All right. Well, see you next time.